Apul Piolinian and the Sun. One day, Apini and her sister-in-law went out to gather greens. They walked to the woods to the place where the Siksiklat grew, for the tender leaves of this vine were very good to eat. Suddenly, while searching about in the underbrush, Aponi cried out with joy, for she had found the vine, and she started to pick the leaves. Oh, as hard as she would, however, the leaves did not come loose, and all at once the vine wound herself around her body and began carrying her upward. Far up through the air she went until she reached the sky, and there the vine set her down under a tree. Aponi was so surprised to find herself in the sky that for some time she just sat and looked around, and then, hearing a rooster crow, she rose to see if she could find it. Not far from where she had sat was a beautiful spring, surrounded by tall Itali nut trees, whose tops were pure gold. Rare beads were the sands of the spring, and the place where the women set their jars when they came to dip the water was a large golden plate. As the pony stood admiring the beauties of the spring, she beheld a small house nearby, and she was filled with fear lest the owner should find her there. She looked about for some means of escape, and finally climbed to the top of a betel nut tree and hid. Now the owner of this house was in it, in it, was any in it, the sun, but he was never at home in the daylight, for it was his duty to shine in the sky and give light to all the world. At the close of the day, when the big star took his place in the sky to shine through the night, any in it returned to his house. But early the next morning, he was always off again. From her place in the top of the betel nut tree, Aponi saw the sun when he came home at evening time, and again the next morning she saw him leave. When she was sure that he was out of sight, she climbed down and entered his dwelling, for she was very hungry. She cooked rice, and into a pot of boiling water she dropped a stick, which immediately became fish, so that she had all she wished to eat. When she was no longer hungry, she lay down on the bed to sleep. Now late in the afternoon, Inni Init returned from his work and went to fish in the river near his house, and he caught a big fish. While he sat on the bank cleaning his catch, he happened to look up toward his house and was startled to see that it appeared to be on fire. He hurried home, but when he reached the house, he saw that it was not burning at all, and he entered, and on his bed he beheld what looked like a flame of fire, but upon closer inspection he found that it was a beautiful woman, fast asleep. Any in it stood for some time, wondering what he should do. Then he decided to cook some food and invite this lovely creature to eat with him. He put rice over the fire to boil and cut into pieces the fish that he had caught. The noise of this awakened a pony, and she slipped out of the house and back to the top of the betel nut tree. The sun did not see her leave, but when the food was prepared he called to her, but the bed was empty, and he had to eat alone. That night any in it could not sleep well, for all the time he wondered who the beautiful woman could be. The next morning, however, he rose as usual and set forth to shine in the sky, for that was his work. That day, her pony stole again to the house of the sun and cooked food, and when she returned to the betel nut tree, she left rice and fish ready for the sun when he came home. Late in the afternoon, Eni in it went into his home, and when he found pots of hot rice and fish over the fire, he was greatly tuffled. After he eaten, he walked a long time in the fresh air. 
Perhaps it was done by the lovely woman who looks like a flame of fire, he said. If she comes again, I will try to catch her. The next day the sun shone in the sky as before, and when the afternoon grew late, he called to the big star to hurry to take his place, for he was impatient to reach home. As he drew near the house, he saw that it again looked as if it was on fire. He crept quietly up the ladder, and when he had reached the top, he sprang in and shut the door behind him. A pony, who was cooking rice over the fire, was surprised and angry that she had been caught. But the sun gave her a betel nut, which was covered with gold, and they chewed together and told each other their names. The a pony took up the rice and fish, and as they ate, they talked and became acquainted. After some time, a pony and the sun were married, and every morning the sun went to shine in the sky, and upon his return at night he found his supper ready for him. He began to be troubled, however, to know where the food came from, for though he brought home a fine fish every night, a pony always refused to cook it. One night he watched to prepare their meal, and he saw that, instead of using the nice fish she had brought, she only dropped a stick into the pot of boiling water. Why do you try to cook a stick? asked any in it in surprise. So that we can have fish to eat, answered his wife. If you cook that stick for a month, it will not be soft, said any in it. Take this fish that I have caught to the net, for it will be good. But the pony only laughed at him, and when they were ready to eat, she took the cover off the pot and there was plenty of nice, soft fish. The next night and the next, a pony cooked the stick, and any in it became greatly troubled, for he saw that though the stick always supplied them with fish, it never grew smaller. Finally, he asked a pony again why it was that she cooked the stick instead of the fish that he brought, and she said, Do you not know of the woman on earth who has magical power and can change things? Yes, answered the son, and now I know that you have great power. Well then, said his wife, do not ask again why I cook the stick. And they ate their supper of rice, and the fish which the stick made. One night, not long after this, a pony told her husband that she wanted to go with him the next day, when he made light in the sky. Oh no, you cannot, said the son, it is very hot up there and you cannot stand the heat. We will take many blankets and pillows, said the woman, and when the heat becomes very great, I will hide under them. Again and again, any in it begged her not to go, but as often she insisted on accompanying him, and early in the morning they set out, carrying with them the many blankets and pillows. First they went to the east, and as soon as they arrived, the sun began to shine and a pony was with him. They traveled toward the west, but when morning had passed into noontime, and they had reached the middle of the sky, a pony was so hot that she melted and became oil. Then Nini in it put her into a bottle, and wrapped her in the blankets and pillows, and dropped her down to earth. Now one of the women of a pony's town was at the spring, dipping water, when she heard something fall near her. Turning to look, she beheld a bundle of beautiful blankets and pillows, which she began to unroll, and inside she found the most beautiful woman she had ever seen. Frightened at her discovery, the woman ran as fast as she could to the town, where she called the people together and told them to come at once to the spring. They all hastened to the spot, and there they found a pony, for whom they had been searching everywhere. Where have you been? asked her father. We have searched all over the world. We could not find you. I am come from Pindayan, answered a pony. Enemies of our people kept me there till I made my escape while they were asleep at night. All were filled with joy that the lost one had returned, and they decided that at the next moon they would perform a ceremony for the spirits and invite all the relatives who were mourning for a pony. So they began to prepare for the ceremony, and while they were pounding the rice, a pony asked her mother to prick her little finger where it itched, 
and as she did so, a beautiful baby boy popped out. The people were very much surprised at this, and they noticed that every time he was bathed, the baby grew very fast, so that in a short time he was able to walk. Then they were anxious to know who was the husband of a pony, but she would not tell them, and they decided to invite everyone in the world to the ceremony that they might not overlook him. They sent for the beetle nuts that were covered with gold, and when they had oiled them, they commanded them to go all to the towns to compel the people to come to the ceremony. If anybody refuses to come, grow on his knee, said the people, and the beetle nuts departed to do as they were bidden. As the guests began to arrive, the people watched carefully for anyone who might be the husband of a pony, but none appeared, and they were greatly troubled. Finally, they went to the old woman, a locoton, who was able to talk with the spirits, and begged her to find what town had not been visited by the beetle nuts, which had been sent to invite the people. After she had consulted the peers, the old woman said, You have invited all the people, except any in it who lives up above. Now you must set a beetle nut to summon him. It may be that he is the husband of a pony, for the sick Salat vine carried her up when she went to gather grains. So beetle nut was called and bidden to summon any in it. The beetle nut went up to the son who was in his house and said, Good morning, son. I have come to summon you to a ceremony which the father and mother of a pony are making for the spirits. If you do not want to go, I will grow upon your head. Grow on my head, said the son. I do not wish to go. So the beetle nut jumped upon his head and grew until it became so tall that the son was not able to carry it, and he was in great pen. Oh, grow on my pig, begged the son. So the beetle nut jumped upon the pig's head and grew, but it was so heavy that the pig could not carry it, and it squealed all the time. At last the son saw that he would have to obey the summons, and so he said to the beetle nut, Get off my pig, and I will go. So any in it came to the ceremony. As soon as Epony and the baby saw him, they were very happy, and they ran to meet him. Then the people knew that this was the husband of a pony, and they waited eagerly for him to come up to them. As he drew near, however, they saw that he did not walk, for he was round, and then they perceived that he was not man, but a large stone. All the relatives were very angry to find that a pony had married a stone, and they compelled her to take off her beads and her good clothes, for they said she must not dress in old clothes and go again to live with the stone. So a pony put on the rags that they brought her, and at once set out with the stone for his home. No sooner they had arrived there, however, than he became a handsome man, and they were very, very happy. In one moon, said the sun, we will make a ceremony for the spirits, and I will pay your father and mother the marriage price for you. This appeased a pony very much, and they used magic so that they had many neighbors who came to pound rice for them and build a large spirit home, and they sent oiled beetle nuts to summon their relatives to the ceremony. The father of a pony did not want to go, but the beetle nut threatened to grow upon his knee if he did not. So he commanded all the people in the town to wash their hair and their clothes, and when all was ready, they sat out. When they reached the town, they were greatly surprised to find that the stone had become a man, and they chewed the magic beetle nuts to see who he might be. It was discovered that he was the son of a couple in a pony's own town, and the people all rejoiced that this couple had found the son whom they had thought lost. They named him a pony Tolu, and his parents paid the marriage price for his wife, the spirit house nine times full of valuable jars. After that, they all danced and made merry for one moon, and when the people departed for their homes, Inyinit and his wife went with them to live upon the earth. <laughs>